Hello everyone, I'm Kate and today I'm going to be sharing with you some tips, tricks, advice, wisdom, I don't know, whatever you want to call this, for Irish dancers from an Irish dancer who has been part of this crazy sport for two decades now. That blows my mind, but coming up at the end of March this year, I will be celebrating 20 years as being an Irish dancer, of being an Irish dancer. So I have learned quite a few things along the way, and so I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I wish I knew at the beginning of my whole Irish dance journey. And if you have any questions for me, I would love to do an Irish dancer Q&A. So just leave them down below. You can tweet me. I'm at Faces by Kate B on every social media platform, and that's also linked down below. So just reach out to me and ask me some questions. I will get back to you. And I can also make a specific video giving you more of a fully detailed answer for those questions that you may wish to ask me. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So for me, I know that it's crucially important for you to realize that you are only competing against yourself. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, I'm sure you have heard this before, but for me, it was so super important to really not focus so much on the placement at either locals or majors, but to really focus on how I felt dancing on stage. And that's what I mean. So instead of saying, oh, I'm only competing against myself, I need to get a high placement that I did last year or you're not, you're not paying attention to the people that you're dancing against like I really want to place higher than so and so no no I just mean paying attention to how you physically and emotionally felt about your dancing so I know that certain times I have gone up on that stage and I have felt really really insecure and shy and timid and when I came off the stage I was like I can do that so much better. Why didn't I? Why did I let my nerves and my insecurities rule how I danced at this competition? So if I got up there the next time and I felt super confident and I was like pepping myself up and getting like super ready to get up there and dance and I felt really uber confident going up on that stage and dancing, that I felt like I had already succeeded because I had beaten myself I was better than I was at the last competition. Does that make sense? So for me, it's really just about the emotional aspect of it, but also the physical aspect. So if I got up there and I danced really, really strong, whereas at the last competition, I was super timid or I missed just going up on my toes because I just didn't feel like it and I was insecure about that move, so I just chose not to do it. And then the next competition, I went up on my toes and I did every single rhythm the way that I had practiced it at, at competition, no, <laughs> at practice, then I felt like I had already won. And so regardless of whether or not I did better or worse in terms of placement than I did at the last competition, I already felt proud of myself and like I had accomplished something major. So really pay attention to the emotional and the physical aspect of your competition, not just the numbers or the placement. This next one may come across as semi-obvious to you, but for me, it was critically important. So your dance friendships that you make at the studio, at competition, with people who dance at different dance schools across the world, but you got to meet them at a major competition, you really want to nurture those dance friendships. Because for me, I didn't realize, my mom had told me this, but that when you graduated from high school, everybody disperses. And even though you say, we're totally gonna hang out, we're gonna get together, we're gonna talk, it doesn't always happen. I've kept in contact with a couple people, but you just don't have that built-in time together. So at the dance studio, that's really where you get to see each other and you get to hang out and you're working towards a common goal together. So that's something that's huge. And also in college, I was at a commuter campus. So it was hard to get to like, get to really know people and hang out with people. So it was a struggle for me to get to like meet new people at college. And after I had graduated from high school, everybody just kind of like 
disappeared. So the friendships that I had at dance class were crucially important for me. I loved getting to go into the dance studio once or twice a week and getting to see all of my friends. Even though we were sweaty and stressed out, we were still having fun and working on something that we both really loved to do. So if you are really struggling with friendships at school and you are an Irish dancer and you were lucky enough to be friends with people at your studio and you like have sleepovers with them or you get together with them, please plan more with them because those are the friends that you are going to have for the rest of your life. These are awesome people. I have extended my family a ton based off of my dance family. So really, really nurture those friendships and just love on people at your studio because those are the people who are really going to get behind you and support you and be with you throughout your entire dance journey, whether it's only a couple of years or it spans a couple decades like mine has. Now this is coming from a person who is, let's just put this, lightly injury prone because I push myself beyond what I should. So really paying attention to what hurts and knowing when to stop is really going to be important in your Irish dance career because once you've injured something, it takes a long time to recover and to get back up to the level that you were before the injury. So for me, we do have dance workshops at the end or the beginning of the summer, depending on what our schedule looks like. But I would really push myself and try to impress my teachers or impress the guest person that we had come in that was helping us coach or choreograph. And I was trying to look really good and show off what I could do, but I really, really would push myself for those five days. And there was one time that I pushed myself really hard on the first day and I did not get to complete the workshops because I had torn muscles. So really, really pay attention to what you can do. And I know it's hard because you really want to impress your teachers and they're up there and they're like, go for it, Hi, show me what you can do and you really want to, but understanding your body and what hurts and knowing that it's something is going to pop or tear and just being able to prevent that is going to be very important in your Irish dance career because for me, I have had to go in for surgery for a broken foot that did not heal correctly. I had to go to physical therapy to work out really strong knots that had actually torn up my soleus muscles. So it's been, it's been rough. I've broken both of my feet dancing, once at a competition and one doing drills at the studio. So I just, I can't stress it enough. Really, really pay attention to what's going on with your body. And if something is screaming and something's really painful, step out of what you're doing, talk to your teacher, explain what's going on, and they will be totally okay that you are completely listening to your body and knowing what you can and can't do. And also explaining, hey, you know, I'm really not strong enough to do that many of this right now, but but give me a week and I will come back and I will be stronger and I will be able to do more than I did last week and they will be super impressed with your gumption, I think is the word, with your moxie to be able to step out but also communicate as an adult and let them know, hey, this is really hurting. <laughs> I will come back to you next week and be stronger and better than I am today. Now that will really impress them. Now in Irish dance, dancing to the timing of the music is something that is really important, but it's also something that I see a lot of dancers struggle with. Sometimes you just count to eight, you know when to start, you know when to stop, but you don't know exactly when to do like your pull drags or your little like cross keys to the music. So really start to listen to the exact timing and the beats of the music. Put your your headphones in and you can even just like hand dance it out. Just listen to the beats and really get it on time so that when you go into the studio and you are actually practicing your dance full out, you can know exactly when to hit the bang, when the slow and the fast treble switch over because that is something that really impresses judges because it is technically a basic. And I know a lot of the judges who have been around for a really long time, they still love the tricks. They're still impressed by how high your leg can 
and kick, but if you're not doing it on time to the music, you can lose points. So really, really pay attention to the rhythms and the beats and the timing of your music, especially in your set dances, because those are ones that are very specific to like the little nuances in the music. So if you train your ear and then you're able to train your feet to go with the music, it's really going to impress your teachers and the judges and you are going to go far. Now something I have learned personally based off uh, experience is that when you mess up your step and you are dancing at a competition that you cannot pause, you cannot stop to think, you have to keep dancing. And so for me, what I figured out is a little rhythm section that I could do that I knew that I was super confident in that I could do until I got back on track with my step. Now I know that this is going to be kind of difficult, but even if it's like one to three and toe, bang, and then like a couple rolls until you hear the music and you're back on with your step, it's super important to not even pause, hesitate, anything. So know that you have something in your back pocket that you can whip out and dance when you mess up. Because for me, this has happened several times where all of a sudden, blink, your nerves completely take over and it's just like, oh, what is my dance? So knowing that you can just have some oh let me just do these trebles and now we're back on just having something in your mind that you will have completely prepared because when your mind draws a blank it's like panic situation it's like alarms and worry and all of a sudden that can completely take over your mind so having something that you're confident in and that you can just like knockout is going to be so important and you're going to be so proud of yourself that you came up with something that you can do and that you feel really solid in and that you can just keep going until you're back on track. So definitely have something like that up your sleeve because it's it's gonna help. <laughs> it's, it's gonna happen. Now this kind of goes back to what I was talking about before with nurturing dance friendships. Make friends with your competition. Backstage I had so much fun because I would always get the conversation going. I would talk to the girls that I was going to dance with and a really good opening line that also gives you some crucial information is asking if they ever go backwards in their step because when they're going and twist 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 backwards and you're cutting across here you know that you can either go behind or in front of them because you've already had the conversation and you can respect each other on the stage because I don't even know if judges still take off points for it but it happened when I was dancing if somebody like purposefully ran into somebody even if it was on accident both of you would lose points for it because it's not good stage etiquette so knowing where girls are going to be headed in their first steps if they go backwards I always ask what direction their lead around starts in because for me if I'm cutting to the front right corner and they're cutting to the front left then you can decide who's going where and who's going in front it's just really nice to just have that conversation with your competition because it gets the ball rolling also because once you've kind of opened up the conversation with somebody you may have never seen before or talked to before or even like no, <laughs> then you can just kind of start talking and then, oh, are you nervous? Are you as nervous as I am? Oh, I love your dress. It's really pretty. And then you can just start talking about where she's from and how long she's danced. So getting to know people is actually really a great fun part of competition it always was for me and I thought that it was really cool that I made friends out of my competition because honestly a lot of like the dance shows that you see or like reputations you hear that like dances are all like I'm just gonna be over here and I'm a diva and I'm just by myself and I pay no attention to my competition because I'm better than everybody it's not true reach out and be friends with people because that makes majors so much more fun and you know who to stand next to when you're like waiting for your name to be called or if you just see them warming up you have a, like a stretching buddy it just makes competition and Irish dance so much more fun I really like just opening myself up and just being able to make backstage also fun because that's where everybody gets really really nervous and all of a sudden the reality of the situation starts setting in so if you can talk and make small talk and just be nice but also getting crucial information about where their dance steps go, you are going to be set. And it feels really good because you just made new friends. So 
I have so much more that I can say in this video, but I know that this is already going to be quite long. So if you have specific questions that you would like me to answer, again, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. All right, my darlings, I hope you found this helpful. I love you all dearly and I will see you next time in my new video. And remember, be kind, be smart, and be glamorous.